In our study, first of all, we evaluated the heat-related mortality in 2023 in 35 European countries. Uh, and we estimated that more than 47,000 deaths were attributable to heat in Europe uh, in 2023. And the most affected regions of Europe were the southern ones. So, for example, Greece, Bulgaria, Italy, Cyprus, Spain and Portugal were the most affected countries. So the countries, uh, these countries correspond to the ones that have uh, um, higher, uh, higher temperature, especially during summer. And the second aim of our study was to evaluate if there has been uh, an adaptation during the year, so in the last uh, uh, 20 years. So what we did here was to estimate what would have been the mortality if the temperature of 2023 happened in the period 2000-2004. And here what we observed is that the mortality that would have happened if temperature of 2023 uh, were recorded in a previous period at the beginning of this uh, century is that we would have had an 80% higher mortality in Europe uh, in this period. So in 2023, we observed a lower heat-related mortality compared to 2022, to the date of 2022. Uh, and also the heat waves that we recorded during 2023 had a different pattern than the ones in 2022. For example, in 2022, the... Mm, a uh, majority of the mortality was recorded between the middle of July and the middle of August, while in, uh, uh, in 2023 we have the 50-56% 50, of the mortality recorded in uh, mid-July and the end of August, so two main heat waves that affected the European population. So the estimation of 47,000 heat-related deaths uh, could be an underestimation of the real heat-related mortality because in this study we had to use the weekly mortality data from Eurostat because we didn't have daily data available. And we know that when we use weekly data we could underestimate uh, this data, the, the heat-related mortality. Uh, so basically what we did here was to apply uh, some uh, uh, methods that have been published in literature to, in literature to correct this bias. And here we estimated with this bias correction that the uh, real heat-related mortality could be over 58,000 deaths in, in Europe. Mm -hmm. The most affected countries are in the south of Europe. Uh, in particular, we observed an increased heat-related mortality in Portugal, Spain, Cyprus, Italy, Greece and Bulgaria. And uh, these are the countries that uh, uh, have the highest temperature during the summer. In our study, we observed that older people have the highest risk of heat-related mortality. And this could be because they, it's, it's more probable that they have chronic diseases or comorbidity, they put them at risk of heat-related stress. On the other side, we observed that women have uh, an higher uh, risk of it related mortality compared to men. And uh, this could be for many reasons. One of the reasons is that we are physiological difference, different. We, there are physiological differences between men and women. But it's not only because of this. Uh, some reason could be the um, social inequalities that are between men and women, a lower salary, uh, differences in the housing and, for example, women tend to live longer and so they tend to become widows and living, uh, live alone and this is an important risk factor. And also in another study we observed that uh, um, there was a higher heat-related risk of mortality uh, in younger men and then there was a switch where the most affected were the older women. And here we, we have some hypotheses and one of them is that uh, um, men tend to develop some um, chronic diseases earlier in life and so that's when they become more uh, susceptible to heat stress. While this happens in women later in life and so they become more at risk of heat-related mortality when they are older. In our study, uh, we observed that if the temperature of 2023 happened at the beginning of this century, 
the mortality would have been 80% higher than what we estimated uh, in the in the 2023. Uh, and this is for the overall population. If we look at the difference between men and women, we don't see differences in the adaptation. The adaptation was similar in men and women, similar rate, similar pattern. Uh, while if we look at the age groups, we observe that older people have uh, ha had um, a faster adaptation because uh, we estimated that if the temperature of 2023 happened at early 2000s, the mortality in older people would have been more than double of what we observe now. So we see that temperatures in Europe are warming at twice the rate of the global average and we are experiencing an increase in extreme events like heat waves, droughts and wildfires. So what we need now are more policy on adaptation and mitigation, for example, increasing the number of green spaces in our cities, improving the urban planning, reducing the greenhouse emissions, this is a, a central point, and also um, for example, improving uh, the engagement of the general public, of the media and of the politics on this topic. And this topic is that health, climate change is uh, an health issue. So climate change and health are not two different topics that they go alone. They must be considered as an intersection. This is the fundamental point. So climate change is an health issue and we need to consider this in this way.